Hello, welcome back to one more session on numbers. In the previous sessions, we have learned many concepts related to reminder theorems and we have solved so many examples as well. Going through all of them is obviously the first step, which provides us a platform where we are going to get very high cat percentile and also get IM inter recalls. When we receive IM inter recalls, it does not mean that we are going to get IM final admission. We need to perform again well in the interviews. The one advantage is if we have a very high percentile in CAT, that is going to be advantageous even in the second round. Where will you get the advantage is quite simple. In CAT, you are supposed to solve some concepts which or normally difficult for majority of the pool. I would say chain list reminder theorem is one among the very important ones which definitely boosts a percentile. Chain list reminder theorem is not a new one. This is the third one of uh, least common multiple applications. In the previous session we have learned le least common multiple 1 and least common multiple 2. In this session we are going to learn LCM3. This is not just related to reminder theorem. It will help us in scoring some algebra concepts quite easily. In fact, in algebra, one type of question is regular in CAT, that is finding the number of possible solutions for an equation or number of integral solutions or non-negative integral solutions for an equation like x plus y equal to some constant. So we can solve that question very easily once we understand Chinese reminder theorem. Let's start learning this one. Now, this is the entire, this is the pie chart for all the numbers questions appeared in the last 25 years. I have divided them. We have, we have seen this pie chart many times in the previous sessions. But since this session is related to Chinese reminder theorem, Let's identify how many questions can be asked in Chinese Reminder Theorem. How many questions were asked? Now, Chinese Reminder Theorem, the weightage is 3%. However, the number of questions asked are 6. That's very limited actually when compared to all the questions actually. But do remember, majority of the students, they don't solve the questions which, which, which are very, very less in terms of the percentage, in terms of the weightage given in CAT. However, solving them is going to be huge advantage now what are, we, are you going to get by solving Chinese reminder theorem first thing it gives us a big boost in percentile and it's crucial in solving some algebra questions so it provides us a platform to understand other chapter or other types of questions that's extremely crucial and also it's really extremely useful in understanding and solving arithmetic progression questions. And in the last five years of CAT, at least one question was based on Chinese Reminder Theorem concept. Let's see what this concept is all about. When we have a number, let's take a number and divide it by D. Let's say same number divided by some reminder, some divisor, we are going to get reminder 1. When the same number is divided by different reminder, that is reminder D2, we are going to get uh, divisor D2, we are going to get reminder R2. Now when the same number is divided by another divisor R3, D3, we are going to get a reminder R3 and so on. Now, if R1 equal to R2 equal to R3, that is equal to constant, this is what we have learned, that is least common multiple 1. This is the method we have learned in the previous session and we have solved many sums. This is 1. The second one, if the difference between reminder and divisor, if that is equal to a constant, that's very easy, that's what we have learned least common multiple 2. Now the third one is chain is reminder theorem where R1 is not equal to R2 that is not equal to R3 and also the difference between 
remainder and divisors are also not equal. That's what we are going to learn. However, we are going to apply the same simple logic to find the answer. I'm going to use arithmetic progression methodology or a series of things where the series appears like an arithmetic progression. That's what we need to find. Let me start with an example. We have got, let's say, a number that is 100. When n is divided by 6, we need to find the remainder that is like 100 by 6. The remainder is 4. That's very easy. Now the same number, let's take 100. When the same number is divided by, let's say, 7. So 100 by 7, the remainder is 2 here. Now, remainders are not equal to, they are not constant. And the difference between remainder and divisor, that is 4 minus 6 is 2. However, 2 minus 7 is 5. So, here both are not possible. Now, what can we do is like, n could be 4, the minimum number. And n is of the format, we know that it's divisor into quotient plus remainder. Here it's divisor 1, quotient 1, it's remainder 1. This is going to be divisor 2 into quotient 2 into R2 plus plus. So that means this is going to be dx plus R. This is going to be d1 that is d2 y plus R2. Now if we write all of them, it appears like the first number is 4. The next one is like 10, 16, 22. 28, 34, 40, 46 and so on. If we write this one, it's going to be 2 first, 9, 16, 23, 30, 37, 44, 51 and so on. What is n here? n is any number. If n is divided by 6, we get the remainder of 4. When n is divided by 7, we get the remainder 7. Now, find the first common term in these two arithmetic progressions or in these two sequences. What is the first common term? 16 is the first common term. That's very easy. It's very easy. 16 is the first common term. What is the next common term? That's what we need to identify. Now, if we write all these things, so it's going to be 52, 58, 64 and so on. This is going to be 58 and so on. 65 and so on. Look at this one. Next common term is 58. Should we write these two sequences, that is these two arithmetic progressions to find the common terms? No, we are not supposed to. We can easily find them by just observing the equations. Look at this one. N is nothing but n is of the form absolutely 6x plus 4 and is also n is of the form 7y plus 2. Now since n is equal to 6y plus 4 and 7y plus 2 we can say 6y plus 4 is same as 7y plus 2. Now we need to find the solution set for xy. So if x is 6 and no, no, if x is 2 and y is 2, then we'll get the solution set for x and y, that is 2 comma 2. And because of this, this is going to be equal to 16. Now, what types of questions can we ask by using this methodology? That is like Chinese remainder theorem is quite simple. How many values can x take if x is less than 100? In algebra, what they can do is like, 6x minus 7y or let's say 7y y minus 6x equal to 2. How many non-negative integral solutions are there for an equation 7y minus 6x equal to 2? That's very easy. Now, look at this one. I'm going to write this one. It's going to be next set is going to be 9. This is going to be 8. The next one is going to be 16. This is going to be 14. Next one is going to be 23. This is going to be 20 and so on. Now, how can I say like this quite easily is 
very simple now x first set is 2 now x grows with a value attached to y that is 7 so it's going to be plus 7 always y grows with a value attached to x that is it grows with a value plus 6 that's very easy now when it is 2 when x equal to and y equal to true so the total sum is 42 and the total sum is 16 next when x equal to 9 then total sum is going to be 58 the next one is going to be 1 or 2 and so on so x grows with a value attached to y y grows with a value attached to x and however n is quite simple n is the first term first common term plus LCM of dividers which are 6 and 7 into k so that means first term is 16 plus 42k so they can ask three types of questions how many values can x take they, they just give us a range or they, or they give us a number less than or equal to that number so they can ask three questions here one we need to find how many solution sets are there for x and y where x is less than 100 and y is also less than 100 or some number or they can simply ask a second type how many values can x or y can take where y is less than or equal to some number 100 the third type they can ask is how many numbers less than 1000 that can be divided by 6 and the remainder is 4 and when divided by 7 the remainder is 2 three types of questions third type is very useful and third type is crucial in understanding algebra questions where they ask non-negative or, or positive integral solutions for an equation like 7x plus 6y equal to 5 or 6 that's very easy now it's not related to equations they can give us the whole thing in slightly a different format they just add a lot of words to it and they create a question we're going to solve five examples once we solve all the five examples i hope that you would be easily able to solve chinese remainder theorem questions just like that and also you would be able to solve algebra questions quite easily let me take the first example n equal to 1 to 1 to 1 to and it has got 300 digits find the remainder when n is divided by 99 this we can do in two ways absolutely two ways one we use Chinese remainder theorem second one we, we, we use the divisibility rules methodology so let's take this number it's given that n equal to 1 to 1 to and so on 300 digits what happens when n is divided by 99 so we need to find the remainder first we'll use Chinese remainder theorem method that is when n divided by 99 and we need to find the remainder since 99 is a different number we never we never learned any divisibility rule related to 99 absolutely of course 99 is of the format 10 square minus 1 that that's what we have learned in the last session of the divisibility rules now to you the Chinese remainder theorem what you just need to do is like you just need to divide this number as a product of two numbers or three numbers or four numbers or just like that a product of some numbers now all those some numbers are extremely extremely useful in identifying the remainder and also I advise you to Take the numbers which are familiar to you look at this one this number we can write it as 9 into 11 now first step is to find the remainder when n is divided by 9 remainder so if n is divided by 9 we know that it's sum of the digits here 152s are there 153s are there or uh, ones are there so it's going to be remainder 0 because sum of the digits that's very easy 450 the sum of the digits now we can add 4 plus 5 plus 0 that's going to be 9 9 by 9 the remainder is 0 
Now the step, second step, what we need to do is n divided by 11 remainder. n divided by 11 remainder is also very easy. We need to add sum of the alternate numbers starting from 2 and subtract the remaining alternate digit sum that is starting from 1. So it is 152s are there starting from unit digit, unit digit is 2. That's going to be 150 into 2 minus the remaining digits that's going to be 150 into 1 divided by 11. So that's going to be 300 minus 150 that's going to be 150 by 11. Now we can find it manually or else we can add again 0 plus 1 that's 1 minus 5 by 11. So remainder is minus 4. So since remainder cannot be negative number, negative number we just need to add the divisor. So 7 is the remainder. So it means this number n is of the format 9x plus 0 and also here it is 11y plus 7. Now n is a very big number, very very big number 1 to 1 to 1 to 300 digits. However, n can be very small number. Once we consider that n is like 1 to 1 to 300 digits, if we consider that is one of the term of an arithmetic progression, then what we are trying to find is the first term. First term happens when x equal to 0. So that means n starts from 0. If at all we are considering only non-negative integers. So if x equal to 0, so it means n is going to be of the series 0. Then next one is 9. Next one is if x equal to it's going to be 18, 27 and so on. Absolutely. Where we are going to get this term actually. Now, as for the second one, n we can write it as, can y be 0? If y equal to 0 actually, so it's going to be 7. So that's, that means the next one is going to be 18 because 11 ones are 11. Now next one is going to be 29, 40 and so on where the 1 is going to be, one term is going to be 300, 1, 1, 1, 1. 1 to 1 to 1 to 300 digits. Now what is the first common term here? The first common term is 18. That is the remainder. So n divided by 99, the remainder is 18. That's what. Now should we write these two arithmetic progressions? No, it's not needed. You can just equate 9x equal to, you can just say 9x equal to 11y plus 7. And when x equal to 2 and when y equal to 1, we'll get 9 into 2, 11 into 1 plus 7, that's going to be 18. So 18 itself is the remainder. Either we can find two arithmetic progressions, absolutely, and try to find the first common term. Now the first common term is the, the remainder when we take the original number and divide by 99. So what is the next common term in this in these two arithmetic progressions? That is very simple. First term plus LCM of divisors that is 9 and 11 into k. So that's going to be 18 plus 99k. Look at this one. We have considered that n is a number. n is one term of an arithmetic progression. And when we divide n or any term of that arithmetic progression with a particular number, we should be able to get the remainder same. So what we have done is, we have taken 99. Since 9, n by 99, how to find the remainder? We have no idea. Let's imagine that we have no idea about the divisible rules. Then what we you can do is like, divide them into 9 into 11 and there 9 and 11 are the concept that we have learned already. Divisible rules, n by 9, n by 11, we have learned. Now, you can probably say that, sir, why can't we divide this n as, let's say, 3 into 33. That's, so, that's what you can do. But we haven't learned any divisibility rule related to 33. Divide them or into product of two or three numbers where each number is known to us. Each number we have used while finding the divisibilities. That's right. Let's take the next sum. n equal to 
123, 123, 123, that's 300 digits. Find the remainder when n is divided by 63. Now 63. Here n is given as 123, 123, 123, that's 300 digits. Now n divided by 63, we need to find the remainder. Now 63 is absolutely an unknown number. Now we need to divide this number into product of two or three numbers. That's what we can say, it's 7 into 9. We have learned how to find the remainder when a number is divided by 7 and also how to find the remainder when a number is divided by 9. So now n divided by 7 remainder. We have already learned that whenever a number is divided by 7, we need to divide the number into cluster of or club of 3, 3 starting from unit digit and we need to add alternate clusters, some of the alternate clusters minus some of the remaining alternate clusters. The first one is like some of the alternate clusters starting from unit cluster that is 123 and the remaining. Now if this whole number is divided by divided into cluster of 3 3 a club of 3 3 where the size is 3 it means that we are going to get 100 different clusters or clubs where each club value is same that is 123. So it means 50 clubs will take the value 123 minus another 50 will take 123 divided by 7 as a result remainder is equal to 0. So it means this number we can write it as 7x plus 0. Next n divided by 9 the remainder so it definitely depends on some of the digits we have got 100 ones we have got 100 twos we have got 100 threes by 9. 600 by 9 that is again we can take 6 plus 0 plus 0 so the remainder is going to be n by 9 remainder is going to be 6 in such a case this number is of the format 9 by plus 6 now n is of the format 7x n is of the format 9 by plus 6 what is 7x is quite simple we have an arithmetic regression where one term is 1 2 3 1 2 3 300 digits now every term of that arithmetic progression is divided by 7 then we'll get a remainder absolutely remainder 0 now we are trying to find the first term so if x equal to 0 so this this series could be 0 then it is like 7 14 21 28 35 42 49 56 and so on now the second one is going to be when y equal to 0 so it's going to be 6 15 24 33 42 51, 60 and so on. Now we just need to find the first common term here. Now in fact the first common term in these two arithmetic regression is 42. So n divided by 63 the remainder is equal to 42. That's it very easy. Or else we, we do have the same method that is like we can equate them that is 7x equal to 9y plus 6 now we need to find the a solution set for x so that happens when x equal to 6 and then y equal to 4 that is 7 into 6 equal to 9 into 4 plus 6 that is 42 so 42 is the remainder either you can take the two arithmetic progressions and identify the first common term or you can solve these two equations which one is better is very simple both are absolutely very easy to answer. When a number is divided by 63, we can easily say that the remainder is going to be less than 63. So we can just write all the terms of the arithmetic progression until the last term is going to be equal to or less than 63. That's what we have done. Now, you can find the set of solutions for x, y. So first set is going to be 6 comma 4. Next one, x grows with a value attached to y. That is like it's going to be plus 9. And y grows with a value attached to x. That's going to be plus 7. So we can say the first series is 6 comma 4. Next one is like 6 plus 9, 15. 4 plus 7, 11. Next one is 15 plus 9, 24. 11 plus 7, 18. Next one is going to be 24 plus 9, 33. Next one is going to be 18 plus 7, 25. Like this. If they ask us to find that how many integral solutions are there for 
2 equation 7x equal to 9 no, 1 equation 7x equal to 9y plus 6 where x is less than 100 or y is less than 100 they can give a range or else they can ask us 7x plus 9y equal to 6 and the first set of solution is like 6 comma 4 it means that it's it is equal to 42 now if n is going to take a number which is less than 42 how many values can n take two things let's find the answer for next question n equal to 753 753 753 i have taken 300 digits every single time i'm taking 300 digits because if i take a big number if if you can solve if you can find the answer for this big number it, you can find the answer for a number where it has got very limited number of digits quite easily now when this number is divided by 504 504 is a very new number we have no idea about how to find the remainder when a number is divided by 504 because we never ever learned how to take the divisor as a 504 so n divided by 504 we need to find the remainder forget about what is n here now this number is how much 7 into 8 into 9 7 into 8 into 9 now we need to find the remainder for all the numbers so n equal to 753 753 and so on that is 300 digits what we need to do is like first one is n divided by 7 remainder so we know how to find the remainder when the number is divided by 7 we need to divide the number into club of 3 3 we need to add the alternate club starting from unit digit and we need to subtract the, the sum of the remaining alternate clubs here we are going to get 100 clubs here 50 clubs is one alternate series second club is also 50 terms so it means that sum of them is 0 0 by 7 is 0 now we need to find n divided by 8 remainder n divided by 8 means the divisor is 8 which is of the format 2 power n 2 power x x is 3 it means that we need to take only the last three digits of the number so in a 300 digit number the last three digits are going to be 753 so it means that it's going to be 753 by 8 so the remainder is 1 here now the final one we need to divide n by 9 remainder n by 9 we know that we need to add some of the digits That's going to be reminder 6 here. 7 appeared 100 times, that's going to be 700. 5 appeared 100 times, that's going to be 500. 3 appeared 100 times, that's going to be 300. So, 700 plus 500 plus 300. 1500. So, again, we can add all the digits. 1 plus 5 plus 0 plus 0, 6. 6 by 9 is 6. Now, it means this question is 7x plus 0 format. N is like 8y plus 7. And it is 9z plus 6. Now we need, just need to, either you can write this equation and say, okay, it's going to be 7, then it's going to be, it start with 0, that is when 7x, when each of the format 7x plus 0, then it's going to be when x equals 0, it's going to be 0, 7, 14, 21, 28, 35, 42, 49 and so on. Now when its number is like 8y plus 7, so it's going to be 7. When y equal to 0, then when y equal to 1, it's going to be 15, 23, 31, 39, 47, 55 and so on. So, when n is like 9z plus 6 format, when z equal to 0, it's going to be 6, 15, 24, 33, 42, 51, 60 and so on. Can you see any common term here? No. It means we just need to write the two arithmetic problems. We just need to continually write. Continuously write. But that is really time consuming. What we can do is quite simple. What we can do is we just need to find the solution. That is, we can you get 7x equal to 8y plus 7. Of course, you have the liberty of taking any two terms here. This is what you can do. 
That's very easy. No, no, it's one actually. Ho, 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 one minute, guys. One minute. It's 8y plus 1. So, I made a mistake here. This 8y plus 1 reminder. So, that means it's going to be 1, 9, 17, 25, 33, 41, 49, 57, and so on. So, it made it 8y plus 1. Let me take. That's going to be 8y plus 1. So what is going to be next? What is going to be the first value? When will it happen? Just find it. The next one, when you find the solution for 7x, then either you can take 7x equal to 9z plus 6 or you can take 8y plus 1 equal to 9z plus 6. That's very easy. Once you find that uh, solution set for x and y and also once we find for solution set for xz, now x has to be common here. Or once we find the solution set for 7x plus 8y, xy is done. Now we need to find the solution set for yz, let's say. Now, so in both the cases, y must be same. When y is same, we can find it quite easily. It's very easy. So find find it for x, y, z. I'm leaving it to you because it's very easy. What we just need to do is like we need to find the solution for x, y, x, z. Now once you find x and y, x and z, x must be same in both the cases. Then in such a case, we just need to subtract uh, substitute x value in any. Or if you say that it's you find it for x, y, and then you find it for let's say y, z, then y, y must be same in both. So just substitute it then we'll get a number here that's it it's a very simple one it's it's not going to take a lot here however if you have no idea about how to find the remainder here that's going to be very very difficult for you to apply any concept in the examination that's it very easy let's solve a word based question In the IPL 2006 arc, open action, X players will go under hammer. If they are divided into teams of 7 players each, 3 players are left out. It means that 3 players are not grabbed by any team. If they are divided into teams of 11 players each, 2 players are left out. It means if 11 players are considered as a team, then 2 players are not picked up by any team. How many values can X take if X is less than 1000? Yeah, now we need to find x. What is x? In the previous questions, x is like n. Yeah, we need to find it for n. Now, we have no idea about n actually. Now, we just need to find how many values can x take n take? How many? Now, same. It's very easy. How many values can n take? And n is defined as, or here it's, it's, it's given as x. So, let me take x only. So, x is less than 1000. Now, we have got x players. If the x players are divided into some teams where each team will get 7, so the remainder is going to be 7. It means x divided by 7, the remainder is 3. It means x is equal to, let's say, 7a plus 3. Same, when the same x, t, x is divided into team of 11, so the remainder we are going to get 2. It means that x is equal to 11b plus 2. Now, how many values can x take? So, it is quite simple. So, what, what we need to do is like, we just say 7a plus 3 equal to 11b plus 2. 
now when a equal to 3 and b equal to 2 so that is going to be 7 into 3 plus 3 and 11 into 2 plus 2 that's going to be 24 when 24 players are there when we divide them into team of 7 we are going to get 3 teams that is 7 into 3 is 21 so remaining 3 players are not picked by any team or else when the same 24 players are divided into a team of 11 so there would be 2 teams 11 into 2 22 players are auctioned so remaining 2 players are not grabbed by any team however we are not supposed to take what is the first set of solution what we need to do is like we need to see how many values can x take now we know how to find a b a b is nothing here we got it as 3 and 2 now a grows with a value attached to b so that is plus 11 and this 2 grows with a value attached to a that's going to be that's going to be plus 7 that's that's what we need to find the set of solution for a and b but if you want to find the solution for that x actually what we need to do is like like first common term plus lcm of divisors into constant so here it is first common term is 24 divisors are like 7 and 11 and into k so that's going to be 24 plus 77 k if k equal to 0 then we'll get 24 players now we just need to find the value for k that's it now k equal to 0 to if k equal to let's say 13 k equal to 10 we are going to get 770 plus 24 that's going to be 794 now we just need to we can get more if say if k equal to 13 so the, we, then we are going to get 1000 plus that is going to be 1001 plus 24 that is going to be 1025 so players are supposed to be less than 1000 it means that k can take up to 12 so k value from 0 to 12 it means that 13 different values are possible for x that's what we need to find look at this one a sim it's not a simple concept we just need to understand all the divisibility rules and also we just need to apply them now once it is done we need to see whether they have asked us to find a b set solution or whether they have asked to find x and also you just need to check the range also that's it what how can they ask this question in let's say in algebra is quite simple so if they want to ask in algebra what they can ask is like how many solutions are there for an equation that is less that is 11b minus 7a equal to 1 where b and a are non-negative integral solutions and also they need to give a range for a or at least for a or b or they can give the range for both what can we do then we can write this as 11b equal to 7a plus 1 when b equal to 2 and a equal to 3 we get the same term that is equal to 11 into 2 is equal to 22 7 into 3 is 21 plus 2 22 now they then they can give a range for b or a that's it now a grows with the value attached to b and b grows with the value attached to a so then we can easy, find it quite easily we will have a separate session for negative or non-negative integral solutions based questions let's solve the final question for a given pair x y that is 3x minus 11y equal to 1 how many x y pairs are possible if x can take a maximum value of 1000 here it's given that x and y are positive integers look at this one this is what we need to find now it's our turn to find for x y x is a number attached to 3 and y is a number attached to 1 so we just need to find it's quite easy 3x minus 11y equal to 1 we just need to find it values x is less than or equal to 1000 or less than maximum so less than or equal to and also x y are integers now first let, let's find it so we can say 3x equal to 11y plus 1 
so the first set of solution is x equal to 4 y equal to 1 then that is 3 into 4 equal to 11 into 1 plus 1 so that's going to be 12 that's very easy now x grows with a value attached to y it means that it's going to take plus 11 and y y value is going to grow with the value of this one that's going to be take plus 3 now we just need to find only for x where x is less than 1000 now x appears like this x is going to be 4 4 plus 11 15 15 plus 11 26 plus 11 37 48 59 70 and so on how many values can x take x maximum is 1000 what we can do is like quite simple it's an arithmetic progression where first term is 4 and we need to find the last term or else what we can do is like x is nothing but 4 plus 11 a where this whole value is less than or equal to 1000 now do remember 8 starts with 0 don't say that a is going to be 1 actually so it means we can say 11 a is less than or equal to 996 a is less than or equal to 90 point some value that's going to be 90.5454 and so on since a has to be an integer so that means a is less than or equal to 90 now here a will take a value up to 90 now these are 91 values not 90 values 91 values carefully here there is every possibility that people just just go for an answer option which says that it's 90 one, on the, one of the answer option is going to be 90, one is going to be 91, another is going to be very closer number. That's why don't commit any mistake here. Look at this one. Here we need to find x and y. So this is algebra. This is how they can ask the number of non-negative integral solutions for an equation. That's it. We will solve. You can solve all the categories and there are six. I am going to present them in the next worksheet and also I will give you solutions for all of them. Before you find the solutions for Cheney's Remind Theorem, I suggest you to go for, I suggest you to watch a video related to non-negative integral solutions. That's it. With this one we will finish the most important topic that is Cheney's Remind Theorem. And we have left with only few things related to Remind Theorem that is like when we use Fermat Theorem. That is very rare in CAT, Fermat Little Theorem, that's never asked in CAT. And Wilson Little Theorem, that's also never asked in CAT. We have an Euler number, that's going to give us a straightforward answer. So that, that's, that's not going to take more time. So we will learn all of them in one section, one session actually. That's it. Next session, I'm going to teach you the remaining reminder theorem based ones. That's going to be Fermat Little Theorem, Wilson Theorem, Euler number. Once it's completed, then we can move to some other chapter, either a geometry or permutation combination or algebra. Thank you.